You did what? No, this one goes there, that one goes there. It's the same every time. All right, I'm back. Be advised, DT-419 is now online. No, you don't put green buttons anywhere. It's red, white, or blue. I don't care what he wants. Never green. All right, bye. Oh, I guess it's that time again. I'm supposed to tear something apart. I hadn't even thought about anything. Wait a second. Maybe I won't get any more phone calls. Well, I guess this week, we're tearing apart a phone. So I looked over all the parts and I noticed that the phone back panel kind of reminded me when Brian Thompson used a utility box for a droid socket, or as Lefty would say, a computer interface socket. I left the link up at the top if you want to see his video on that. Hey, 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 wait, wait. You can watch it after. I haven't finished yet. I got a great project coming. Hold on, hold on. I'm going to make a maintenance control panel. With each project, I try to add a new skill or technique to my arsenal. I wanted to make a perfect inset panel for this project. So I glued some boards on the back to act as a guide for a router bit. I then drilled some pilot holes so I could finish the rough cutout of the panel opening with a jigsaw. To clean up the edges, you need a flush trim bit. These come with either a guide bearing on the bottom or the top of the bit. Depending on how you approach the cut, one bearing type will be more preferred than the other. Now the lesson I learned from the last cut, don't forget to put down the masking tape because it is a bear to get the boards back off the panel without destroying everything. Just place the tape on both edges and a little glue will do the work for you. So bonus footage, I decided to tear apart a keyboard as well. I really thought what lay underneath all those keys was pretty cool. With the use of a Dremel and a cutting bit, the section I wanted came out super easy. Now, as I was looking back at my phone parts, I spotted a sweet circuit overlay. This part is used on a phone to complete the circuit when you press the buttons on the phone to dial a number. But for me, it's gonna be an awesome static display. Now at this point, I felt I needed something on the left side to balance out the panel. And to be honest, I think it would be reckless to have this much power at one panel and not have any way to shut it on or off. And as a certain smuggler has publicly declared on several occasions, things come best in a group of three. Now, as I reflect on this statement, using this particular template for my buttons, it all seems a bit ironic. At this point, masking tape, a pilot hole, a step bit, a dab of glue, and a whole lot of anxiety while routing out buttonholes with a droid panel as a template, which I can't even replace if I make one mistake. As we all know, droid kits don't grow on trees. But for the final touch, I squared out the holes using a file and a chisel. To help focus the light, I built some LED light boxes. And what better to highlight the phone circuit overlay than a dark red acrylic sheet? Add a light box and this static display is ready to inform Empire troops 
of the same exact information each and every time they walk by. So now onto the center stage. The foam back panel allows this maintenance panel to have some depth to the project. A little PVC and some greeblies, and this will be an impressive project to behold. I thought a mechanical connection would be better, so I cut a couple holes into it so that I am able to firmly connect the conduit to the back panel. As for the weathering, I'm going to be very modest at this time. I have grown to really like this prop, so much so that I want to expand on it so that this prop actually will sit into an even bigger panel. To ensure the weathering all matches, I will hold off on the weathering until that day comes. I am adding a little bit of hidden accent lighting to play tricks on my future older self, who will probably ask, where is that lighting even coming from?